everybody, and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, it's Dennison. Hello, and welcome to another brand new episode of Collider Movie Talk. As you can see, John is not here. He is in New York taking care of bigger, more important things with the parent company. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm here filling in. Also, here's John Schnapp. Why, hello. Today, <laughs> on a Thursday, we're live again, and I was doing the movie phone voice. That's a good one. Also movie here, talk. Christian Harloff. There's nothing more important than what's going on right now, Dennis. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we get into our regularly scheduled topics, uh, we want to just quickly bring up the, the Kylo Ren poster. It actually dropped yesterday as well with the four posters you guys talked yeah. about yesterday. So uh, bring that poster up. There we go. Uh, Kylo Ren also kind of in the same position as, as the rest of them with something blocking the, his his eye. What do you guys think about this poster? Um, it's pretty cool. It's yeah. a, it go, it, you know, I'd like to see all of them in a row because that, that would look pretty cool. But I kind of expected like if they dropped another poster for the Sith that they would keep that kind of like thing in the in the front of their eyes. So. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Shep, Kylo Ren is not a Sith. Oh, 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 oh. Um, <laughs> but I, I do like the fact that they've had this consistency with all the posters. And you knew that Kylo Ren, there would be one that dropped because that's who they've been promoting mm -hmm. so far throughout this entire thing, whether it be through promotional art or posters or toys. It's been Kylo Ren with Daisy Ridley and uh, John Boyega front and center. So this makes sense. You knew it was coming sooner or later. I'm surprised it wasn't all lumped out at the same time. Maybe it was. We just missed it. I have no idea. But um, it's it's pretty cool. And a lot of people ask, too, with Kylo Ren, like, is he going to survive the first movie? I think it's a huge mistake if they, yeah. they kill him off in the first one. Like with Darth Maul, it's like you're building this, this ominous character. And then if he dies in the first one, it's like, okay, I don't know. We, you, I think we need an enemy that kind of goes through the whole, at least the, first, the, the three movies. I'd say maybe. I mean, the thing was, too, I, it's... It, the other thing too is that it, if we're talking about let's say Darth Maul, who if you followed Star Wars down the line, he came back, and if the movie fans, you lost him pretty quick. But he wasn't really set up that well mm -hmm. throughout the movie either. He was just like like you said, he was like this force, and then at the very at the very end, he he goes up against Qui Gon, and then Obi Wan kills him. So and he's like, well, where where did he go? But had he been developed throughout the entire movie with a history, with a with a backstory, motivation. with a motivation, and then he would have died, we would have accepted it more. So maybe they do that with Kylo Ren. I don't necessarily think he's going to die, but if but if he did, as long as he's developed and you give me a reason to care and see a kind of a tragic thing, and then Snoke is set up to be the villain, I'd be okay with it. Yeah, but I mean, you know, he might have some amazing tone poems like <laughs> Darth Maul did that weren't in the movie. So I don't know. I think I don't. I don't. I seriously hope they don't kill him, and I hope if. if if that does happen to ha ha have to happen, that at least he's a developed character. So it seems like just from the trailer, they're showing that he is. A, there's a lot of him in there. He's got motivation. Yeah. yeah, but I think the opposite of you. I think because they they're showing his motivation and they are developing his character, that's why he won't die. I don't think he's. I don't think he's gonna die. Yeah. I don't think. He's, I'm just saying, if he does, I'd be less upset if he's developed than I was with like Darth Maul. But I I, I definitely don't think he's gonna go this round. But um, because I think there's more to come with him, more development of what he's going to become down the line, how he furthers the story. And also if. Speculation is correct that he is a, a Han Solo Leia, you know, kid, right. kid. Then I don't think they're going to just axe him right from the beginning. They're going to have some sort of story arc with him yeah. towards the end. All right, uh, let's get on to the first subject. The first trailer for Alice Through the Looking Glass, the sequel to Disney's Alice in Wonderland, has been released. Tim Burton, who directed the first movie, is only in a producer role this time, with the Muppets director James Bobbin stepping in as director. Returning cast includes Mia Wasikowska, Johnny Depp, Anne Hathaway, and Helena Bonham Carter, while Sasha Baron Cohen and Reese Fonz make their first appearances in the franchise. The film opens on May 27, 2016 in theaters everywhere. Dennis, what do you think of this first look at Alice through the looking glass if i was judging it purely just on the trailer i like it it's interesting it makes me want to go see it the visuals are spectacular uh the returning cast which i which i all i like all of them are coming back the addition of sasha baron cohen i, I like him however my 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 excitement is severely tempered because i didn't really care for the first right. one i didn't hate it but i thought it was really flat and dull and even these actors I really like gave kind of dull performance. The only one I 
I thought did a good job was uh, Helena Bonham Carter as the mm -hmm. Red Queen. I liked her, but everyone else was just really, really flat. And I understand why they're making another movie. I mean, it's made a lot know, of money, a bi over a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. Right. Of course, they're gonna make another one. Uh, and I like James Bobbin. Uh, he did the two Muppets, and it, I guess he. I looked at his uh, IMDb, and he did uh, the Ali G show, and that's why Sasha Baron Cohen is right. in here. What, what do you think, Schnapp? Um, I like the trailer okay. I mean, once again, I agree with you. I thought the Alice in Wonderland uh, version that, uh, that Tim did was, it was visually cool, but like if it was definitely, it did not add up at the end. Uh, I liked, you know, uh, Helena as well. A lot of the scenes with her were like, where's my piggies? There was like little flourishes that were really fun in that, in that movie. And I see that in this trailer as well. So I'll, I'm looking forward to seeing it, but it's not high on my list. Yeah. I dug the first look, and the thing is, you know, uh, they showed this during D23, so this is pretty much the same thing that they showed, but, you know, when they showed the initial trailer, when Tim Burton directed it, I think everyone was like, wow, this looks cool, this is what Tim Burton should be doing, because Alice in Wonderland's perfect for him, that world of kind of nonsense and, and just those crazy visuals, but for me, my issue with the movie was that it became Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, and it wasn't just Alice in Wonderland with Tim Burton's style, and... I think that Bobbin will actually make it more, he'll take that st style that Tim Burton introduced in the first movie and combine it with what Alice in Wonderland is overall. It does look pretty cool, pretty big. Uh, maybe he'll get different performances out of the actors and actresses. But I'm actually, I'm, I'm kind of interested in it. I know that we're getting Johnny Depp again as, you know, kind of a kooky, the kooky character. But he played it huh. in the first one. So he, I, I'm very, I, I was like, Alice in Wonderland, by the way, is my favorite Disney movie, like of all time. So I want to see, I didn't hate it, like, or dislike it, I think, as much as you You're guys did. 2D animated one, not the, yeah. not the, not the no, 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 the original, the original, the 1950s yeah. uh, version, that's one of my favorites of all time, but, uh, but, but I didn't hate the original Tim Burton one either, but I'd like to see what could happen here, so I'm curious. Yeah, all right, uh, on to the next question. According to The Wrap, Sony is planning a sequel to the adaptation, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, except without its former director, David Fincher, and its former stars, Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara. The next movie, The Girl in the Spider's Web, will be based on the fourth novel in Stieg Larsson's Millennium series, which was written by David Lagerkrantz after Larsson's death. Originally, Sony had been planning for The Girl Who Played With Fire to be the follow-up film, but now plans on producing that adaptation after The Girl in the Spider's Web. Also in the report, it says that Alicia Vikander is being looked at for replacing Rooney Mara in the lead role. Schnepp, what do you think of Sony's decision to move forward with a sequel to The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo without its former director and lead actors? Well, um, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but... Uh, I, I'm a fan of the original trilogy, um, so when they remade it here in America, I was like, you know, you can't really go that bad if you got David Fincher and they had Daniel Craig and uh, Rooney, Rooney Mora. Well, she, th there, was a, there was a great cast. It was a good uh, remake. I didn't hate the remake. I just still think the original uh, versions are, are superior. So if Sony has to move forward and not have David Fincher and not have Daniel Craig, and they're just going to, I think this makes sense because it's a clean break from that original earlier storyline and it's not part of the trilogy. It's still using that character so they could do this one and then do a reboot of the other three. So, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I'll see what happens. I mean, I, yeah, I like the remake. I actually didn't see the original one, so I have nothing to compare it to. And and one of the main reasons was because David Fincher. That's why we mm -hmm. saw it. I think he did the social network the year before and, and made Sony some money. With Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, it, it didn't do as well as they thought it was going to do. And so they were a little hesitant. I am actually a little curious that they're moving forward with this at all. I think kind of the interest and momentum and hype of this series is kind of gone. And the main selling point for me... David Fincher is not coming back, so I, I'm not quite as, as interested. Christian? That's the thing that got me is when, when I'm reading over the notes this morning and I see David Fincher uh, not going to be involved. I'm like, eh. No Daniel Craig. Eh. And then, you know, no Rudy Mara. I'm like, what are they doing? But then when you said Alicia Vikander, I went, oh, oh well, wait a minute. Right. Hold on. because for, She's just, for me, not only is she just stunning to look at, she's yeah. so talented. She's going to be one of those actresses that is around for a very long time. She's uh, perfect for this role. And had she been cast, I, mean, I love Rooney Mara as well too, but had she been around back that time, the same age range, I, I think everybody would be like, oh, yeah, she's perfect for the role, absolutely. Now the question is, who can they get for me to go, Okay, now that Fincher's not there, okay. can they get somebody else, or can they get someone now? Now that's going to play the Daniel Craig role, that we are just because they get this amazing talent that we all go. Okay, wait a minute, 
because I agree with you guys. I don't. I think that it's it's going to be tough to do because we already ha- we never have even had a sequel with these guys. They're going to be continuing on. You can't reboot it again, so it's going to be a tough hill to climb. But I think they can do it with the right talent. They just got to make sure that they they secure everybody in the right spots. Also, it's interesting that they're doing the fourth book because it, it, it's yeah. not the original writer, and it also kind of makes sense if they're doing a reboot. They're doing a fresh reboot because this film, this book has not been adapted yet. Right. So it is brand new to all the fans of the original trilogy all around the world. So. Also, remember there was reports about Daniel Craig not want, like he wanted more money to come back. Seems to be a report for him with every movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, remember Daniel Craig, I mean, other than the Bond films, which he's you know most famous for, he's not really a huge draw right, right. for him. But and him asking for money for a movie that really didn't do that well, that to me is a sign of he actually really didn't want to come back. Yeah. Like he's like, oh yeah, yeah. If you give me more money, I'll I'll, I'll redo this role. Well, it, the movie did okay. It, it did didn't, okay. It didn't crush, and yeah. because it, and I think it was, for when it came out, they put it on a strange release date as well too. I think it was like Christmas time or right right. before. Yeah. It, it was. It, it, there were a couple things I was working against it, but I I really actually like the remake a lot. But it's it's gonna be tough to do another even another story with those characters because like you said, Shemp, it really is like just like a standalone brand new film. Right. The production budget was pretty high yeah. though for it. It was ninety million dollars. If you watch that movie, I not really a big budget action no. like you're you're like, where did all that money go? All right, guys. Uh, now, before we move on to buy or sell, uh, just a reminder, we are live. So we're going to take live Twitter questions at the end. Ashley will be picking them out later. So be nice to her. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to buy or sell. What do we got first? Paramount has released two new trailers for the upcoming Michael Bay film, 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. The movie is based on the attack on an American diplomatic compound in Benghazi, Libya on September 11, 2012. The movie stars John Krasinski, James Badgedale, Pablo Schreiber, and David Costable and is set for a January 15, 2016 release. Christian, buy or sell these new trailers for 13 hours. I buy the trailers and if you guys are watching, if, if you've been watching for a little bit, you know I'm not the biggest Michael Bay fan, but Pearl Harbor had an amazing trailer. Um, he, This guy can cut his company or whoever's cutting trailers from cuts them well. Um, this is another one. I actually, the thing that scares me about the movie, not the trailer, is that he's done true stories before. So he's like, you've never been told a story like this. I'm like, well, don't tell me the way you told me Pearl Harbor. I don't need a love yeah. triangle. Yeah. You know, I just want to see Pearl Harbor. Um, and then even with Pain and Gain, that I know a lot of people actually liked Pain and Gain, but I felt that the way that he handled the true story with taking elements of a, the tragedy maybe was could have been handled a little better, but certainly his best movie that he's done in a long time. This could be a a really good movie for him. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't let, what he's really bad at is comedy. There doesn't mm-hmm. seem to be any. There's no comedy in this. This seems to more and 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 more serious than say. I love The Rock, but there, it was certainly an action movie to it, and again, lended itself to to Nicolas Cage doing comedy. This could be a, a different side of Michael Bay that we see because this movie does look pretty intense. It looks. It looks like a different role for Krasinski. I'm and I love James uh, Baldet. I think uh, he he is. He's a really, really good actor. Is he the guy from the Pacific? He James, uh, he's been in everything, man. But he, the first time I ever saw him was in Twenty Four. But he was, he was just. I mean, most recently, comic movie was in Iron Man Three. But he was in. I yeah, mean, that's the guy from the Pacific. Yeah, he's been, he's been in tons of stuff, and he's always. I know he was in Departed. It was a movie to yes. me that he was. He, that he's an incredible actor that needs more of ro- roles like this. But the thing that scares me again, like we talked about yesterday, it's in January. Mm-hmm dumping ground normally um but you know campy had brought up the other day maybe that this is a this is a push to put it in january to say oh we believe in this movie maybe we'll get a couple more eyes in it a little bit more box office so we're not going up against something like star wars so um yeah but the trailers i really enjoyed i, th- I think they're trying to duplicate the success of american sniper exactly like putting in that time frame um but sniper got a limited release got, in december got a limited as well release too. so it could be oscar yeah. worthy but yeah. i think what they're trying to do is like drop it in january like american yeah. sniper dropped in worldwide release mm-hmm. so i mean you're right yeah I, I based on the trailer just like the alice in wonderland one i'm gonna buy it and everyone also knows i have issues with michael bay but just if i watch the trailer don't think about who's directing it i think they're good trailers and it looks like a good movie I am apprehensive about the Michael Bay aspect yeah. of it. I mean, we talked about this a long time ago, back when we were still at the stream when this was announced. You know, Michael Bay is not known for subtlety and nuance. And in this type of movie that's based on true events, we don't want to see a Pearl Harbor. We don't want to see some sort of tacked on uh, 
story, romance, or emotional fake story to it. We just kind of want to see a retelling. Like yeah. a, I'd rather see something like a, a Black Hawk Down mm -hmm. or a Zero Dark Thirty. I mean, those weren't like a hundred percent accurate, but at least they were a little more faithful than Ridley something like Ridley Scott, Catherine Bigelow. Yeah, <laughs> more, more faithful than right. something like a, a Pearl Harbor, where right. it was like Titanic with you know using Pearl Harbor as the, as, as the background. So. Yeah, I, I am a bit apprehensive. Schnepp? I'm going to buy this, but, you know, I'm going to buy it with, uh, you know, with the caveat of, like, it's a good trailer. There's a lot of pyrotechnics that you see. There's a lot of action scenes that seem very, like, kind of mechanically shot. So, uh, you know, when you have someone like Paul Greengrass, it grounds the film mm -hmm. a little bit more. And especially when it's a, like it's you're do doing something that it's not even a true story, but you're, like, trying to stay within the character's emo emotional grounds, you know? The minute you start making stuff too action-based yeah. and, like, are, are they friendlies? Here, they're coming, mm -hmm. you know? It becomes an action war movie as opposed to a true story. With that, I, I think the trailer, actually, if you didn't have Michael Bay's name on there, I would have been, like, I'm looking forward to seeing this film. So, I and I liked Pain and Gain, mm -hmm. so... I, I don't care about the other films that he did. Like maybe this film, he's really knocking it out of the park. We'll see. I like the trailer. Yeah, and no, I'm more, I'm worried that like, I don't mind if he uses slow motion I was in the just movie. Gonna say over under thirteen slow motion <laughs> yeah. shots. Right. But they have to fit the particular scene. He can't just do them to make make it look cool or panning shots to make it look cool. This is more of a Paul Greengrass yeah. gritty type of thing. So if he does it in that vein, I mean, I he may doesn't see know. This but movie. the thing is, what I'm worried about, he doesn't know how to do that. I know. I mean, that's just not his strong. It's it's not his. That's not what he does. Like every movie that he shoots. Whatever the tone may be, he shoots it the same exact yeah. way with the slow motion. The I'm, I'm getting like videos. tricked again. Like yeah, I'm thinking well, like, oh, he's, he's not going to change his style. Uh, don't over, you're going to over thirteen, over thirteen. Yeah, don't don't tr don't. I mean, I think that he could do a different movie, but I certainly don't. I'm not looking for him to change his directing style because he just doesn't know how to do that. It's not what he does. He, can, can we address the two trailers? Because I found a little okay. strange. The, the like green band saying. and the red yeah. band. So yeah. I watched the red band one first. Okay. Because I was like, oh, the, the green band will be totally different. And it was almost the exact same <laughs> pretty, thing. Pretty similar. Only they yeah. just cut out like two like slightly extended action sequences. Some swear words. Yeah, a couple. few swear words. But I was like, they're almost exactly yeah, the same. Totally no the same. Why? In, in so mostly. why? What was the? What's the catch? I, I have no idea because I was looking for it too, and I even think they they used two of the same curse words in both of the of the trailers. And I thought there would be more violence in right. the yeah. red one, red band one, like some sort of something that we haven't, you know, like heads getting blown yeah, off arms, or something. Yeah, yeah. some, some really stone cool. guys like uh, I upload the same one twice, man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, what's next? In the latest issue of Entertainment Weekly, we get our first look at Eddie Redmayne in the upcoming Harry Potter prequel film, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Redmayne plays the lead character, Newt Scamander, along with a supporting cast, including Colin Farrell, Ezra Miller, John Voight, Ron Perlman, Catherine Watterson, Samantha Morton, Carmen Ejogo, and Gemma Chan. The movie is being directed by Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows director, David Yates, and is set for release on November 18, 2016. Dennis, buy us all this first look at Eddie Redmayne and Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. I'm going to be, I'm going to buy it. I'm a fan of the franchise. I'm not like a hardcore, like I didn't read the Harry Potter books, but I enjoyed the movies, especially three on. If I, if you had told me Eddie Redmayne had been in one of the previous Harry <laughs> yeah. Potter movies, it, like he was at Hogwarts or whatever, at, you know, as part of the Hufflepuff house or something like that, <laughs> I would have been like, oh yeah, he was, you know, because he just looks and acts and feels yeah. like it. So I think it's perfect casting. I like the pictures. You have uh, Colleen Atwood, who you interviewed for um, uh, Death of Superman Lives. She's doing the costumes for it, and, and they look fantastic. Schnepp, what about you? I smell another Oscar for Colleen mm -hmm. Atwood. Um, yeah, I want to join the Hufflepuff Society <laughs> as soon as possible. Uh, the Snaggle Snorts, they kicked me out, so I want to. I'm getting into the Hufflepuffs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Eddie Redmayne, he's a fantastic actor. He looks great. He's almost like, when I first saw it, I was like, is he the new do Doctor Who? That's <laughs> what I thought, you know? But uh, I'm like, all right, man, let's let's see what kind of weird creatures he finds, you know? Darn it, Schnepp, you took my line. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I definitely, th I got a Doctor Who vibe when I saw it for sure. Yeah. And uh, this, he, you're right, Dennis, he he fits the world perfectly and it they say it on on this cover here is that the most anticipated movie of 2016 i wouldn't go that far <laughs> right. but i would definitely put it in my list because i am a big harry potter fan i read a lot of the books um i loved the movies and i think that this is a this is a world that it, it benefits from a prequel that they could set it back 70 80 years and not it's not just like oh they're just going to the well again because of the cast that they have the director the fact that jk rowling is doing it and this dude just is perfect to be taking us through this adventure so it's a big buy for me and he's an oscar 
winner now. Yeah. So yep. so if he decides to take this on, I mean, they, he must really, really believe in the project. Oscar winning oh. magic yeah, zoologist. What is and it called? He a wants magic to zoologist? Get past the fact that he spoke <laughs> like this. Right. Like Voldemort. Or then, maybe, yeah. maybe it's a prequel. It like he's Voldemort. He's Voldemort, and they, and they tie it over from yes. Jupiter ascending. Yeah. This is another one of those Jar Jar Binks yeah. is, is Snoke type of <laughs> fan theories. Right? I want him to yell so bad in this movie now. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what, what did you think of these pictures? I'm so freaking excited for this movie. Like, Eddie Redmayne. Honestly, what a perfect fit for this because he's just so freaking talented. I loved him in um, Theory of Everything. I know you guys hated on him for Jupiter Ascending, but I think he's so talented. And these pictures are like, I'm not ready for Harry Potter to be over. So when they announced that these prequels were coming, I was so freaking excited. And I cannot wait to see this one. So Ashley definitely buys this. <laughs> I definitely yeah. buy. Buy, buy, buy. <laughs> All right, guys. Now on to our coming soon segment where we talk about movies opening this weekend. Brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. On Tuesday, we talked about Spectre. Uh, today, we're talking about the Peanuts movie. Ashley, can you tell us a little bit about of the Peanuts movie? I can. Let Life always seems complicated for good old Charlie Brown, the boy who always tries his best against seemingly impossible odds. When the little red-haired girl moves into his neighborhood, Charlie Brown finds himself smitten with her. As he deals with his feelings, his best friend Snoopy embarks on his own adventure in a fantasy world. As a World War I flying ace, the lovable beagle pursues his nemesis, the Red Baron, while also trying to win the heart of a beautiful pilot named Fifi. The Peanuts movie opens tomorrow in AMC theaters everywhere. Christian, what do you think about this movie? You saw it, right? I saw, it. saw it. I saw it. I, I, I just put my review up last night. Um, it's awesome. It is really cool. And people with souls <laughs> will, <laughs> will want to see it. I'm um, kidding. Uh, but the movie the movie itself, look, if you're a Charlie Brown fan, what I was worried about going into the movie was that they were going to smurf this movie yeah, or smurf. chipmunk this yeah. movie and, and say, well, we got to modify it because not everybody knows what Charlie Brown is. So let's put modern day music and stick like an actor. in. And Neil Patrick Harris, is he around? They don't do any of that. It, it takes you right back to what you liked about Charlie Brown. Now, if you don't like Charlie Brown, you're not you're not going to care about the movie, but it just it was emotional. Um it 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 had a lot it just it was a really it was a good story. It, you know, some people had problems with the Snoopy and Red Baron thing when they were young. Like mm. you either love those things or you're like, "Ah, why they throw the random Snoopy have like that's in there. I loved it. I'm a big Snoopy fan. I love all the Red Baron stuff, but it just felt like uh Charles Schultz. It felt like I was back as a kid watching it. It's a really cool watch. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I might try and see it either tonight. Definitely sometime this yeah. weekend. And you're right that the whole thing is it felt like the Peanuts. It felt like Charlie Brown. It felt like Snoopy. It wasn't like Alvin and the Chipmunks, which is one of the worst trailers I've ever oh, seen yeah. in my life. You know, like the you farts and poop jokes. <laughs> right. and You know, none of that. Like, man, like how could you do that to... To, to the peanuts if if, if that actually yeah, happened they didn't. It's it not. didn't so i'm looking forward to it Schnepp. yeah i i cannot wait i loved all the charlie brown cartoons when i was a kid i played schroeder and you're a good man charlie brown when i was in high school so i i and i love snoopy so for me i've been waiting for this since we saw the the for very first teaser like a year ago and i was like wow they're able to capture the cartoon the printed like sunday morning cartoon strip but now it's in 3D and it doesn't feel weird. So you saw the whole film. How does it feel when you watch the whole movie? It doesn't. You don't. You, it it serves itself. It really like you. Could, it's, that was a concern too. It's like, at, will this kind of animation work with Charlie Brown? And it does because what they even do is they even give you some of the old school and they put it in there. Like when he has memories, they throw back ah. to it. It's it's really creative. It's smart. even Ray. You hear him like, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> it's, it's like it's because it is. It's like and the music. The second the music hits, it's like the difference again. Dennis, we always seem to bring this up with Vacation, right? When Vacations. The movie started and and Holiday Road played. It's like oh nostalgia. I'm in. And then, but when you have Charlie Brown, the music, the nostalgia, and it holds it holds through the whole time. Like everything. Like you'll get transported back to being a kid if you like being yeah. a kid. Yeah. There, there's someone at this table. <laughs> if you were human. All right, all right, guys. Who, who, who doesn't this seem morning, to be so excited? This morning in the production meeting, Dennis asked if I'm excited for the Charlie Brown movie. And I'm just not freaking excited for this. I'm not a Charlie Brown fan. What Charlie Brown reminds me of is when you're in grade school and your teacher doesn't know what to do because it's raining outside and you're not allowed to go outside for recess. So she's like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put on Charlie Brown. That's exactly what Charlie Brown reminds me of. And all the kids are like, oh, I don't want to watch Charlie Brown. I'm just not a Charlie Brown fan. That's fair. That's yeah. a, right. that, That's fair. It was, See, it was a, locked in a room. But that's not what you said. Just, it was like, 
No one I know wants to watch this yeah. movie. I think it, I think <laughs> it can I think it can transfer. I think there are a lot of generations that will see it. But I agree with you though. I do think that there are some people who won't give a crap about it. You shouldn't like it. You know, you don't like it. You're not going to love it. I'm just but not a fan. I think that there are many generations that will. At first, I thought she said she was like, "Oh, Charlie Brown reminds me of a kid I used to pick on <laughs> yeah. in elementary I was school." Not a Which, yeah. Oh my god! When your <laughs> when your teacher when your teacher locked the door, did it sound like this? <laughs> exactly. Wow. That's exactly what it sounded like. I will put money. I haven't even seen the movie yet but i put money on it that if if ashley actually watches the movie she'll like no, she'll i'll like see it. the movie and, she'll and i'm sure it'll be yeah. great but she's gonna as rave as a, about I'm it i'm just yeah. not like oh my god yes i need to see right, this right. i'm just like okay i'll i'll see it i'm sure it'll be great and you said it was good it so. is because it's like it's like you really do feel you get the feels it's it's like it's it's emotional and they do it the right way and like it's it's just got a, it's got a heart and that's that was for me i didn't know if i was going to care enough about it to where i was like i like charlie brown right. But I was rooting for him again, like because he's just a, such a sad sack for a lot of it, you know. And then you're like, "Come on, kid, you can do it." Yeah. Did you and cry? No, but I had. But the dog, like the fact that you know the relationship with the dog and Snoopy's always got his back, and it's never really mean spirited. And even when they're called, he's called Blockhead. There's like, it, it, it's a good story. It's cool. All right, cool. All right, we're gonna move on to mailbag now, where we answer your uh, viewer submitted questions. You just email us at uh, collidervideo at gmail.com. Also, a reminder: we're taking live Twitter questions at the after this, so you can tweet us at Collider Video, and Ashley's gonna pick out a few. So, what's first in the mailbag? Deshaun Corbin writes, greetings from Philly. Been a fan since the now infamous Man of Steel videos. Love you guys. My question is about Deadpool's heavy film marketing. I can't remember the last time a studio and actor backed a movie so hard, even down to dressing up as the character on Halloween. All my promo all the promotion for it has been perfect in my opinion, but do you think they are oversaturating the general public? First of all, I love the Halloween video that Ryan Reynolds did. If it wasn't Ryan Reynolds, and I know that he has love for Deadpool, I would just think, oh, they just got a stunt actor. He did the voice, and they threw it in. But knowing him, it's probably him under that actual costume, yeah. and he mm -hmm. probably went out and actually did that. Uh, but in terms of the oversaturation, no. You know why? Because no one knows who Deadpool is. I mean, I know we know who Deadpool right. is, and you guys know who Deadpool is, and comic book fans and everything. The general public does not know. We're, we're right next to the Burbank 16. If we go down there and talk to random people, there'll be like a small minority of people who know who it is. Most people will be like, is that some sort of Spider-Man ripoff character? Or they would say, isn't, isn't that that Clint Eastwood movie from yeah. 1980, mm -hmm. The Deadpool? So, so what, do you, what do you think, Christian? I think you're absolutely right. I don't think, I mean, it, for us, as far as the way that they're marketing it and why they're marketing it the way that they are because it's working uh, what they've done so far with the with the announcement with the, when AC Slater came out and was talking about uh, and, and, he, and, he, and he, that whole thing the way that it was announced yeah. the way that he's been doing stuff on social media all of that stuff it's been working so why not do more videos like this I love the video I thought it's exactly who Deadpool is the fact that he's interacting with other superheroes kind of yeah. was really cute it was, it, was a, it was a good idea and it was, and it was still towards the Deadpool audience audience and I think that you're right I don't think a lot of people know who Deadpool is unless you're like a, a hardcore comic book fan or or you're in the movie news um, if you're if you're up to date on the movie news so I think this is the way to do it plus this is this is going to be a risk for Fox because it's an R-rated yeah. superhero film we haven't had one in, in a bit I mean you can kind of count the Kingsman which th they did and they did it well so I think their marketing is, is perfect for this movie right now Schnipp. Yeah, I mean, I liked him cracking on those kids. It made me laugh. And it's definitely Ryan Reynolds' sense of humor where he's like, go sit back in the swing. You know, mm -hmm. just like he had to be there and make that all that kind of, you know, riffing happen happen, and just like, you know, they cut it together really well. It was really fun. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing this movie more and more with all the promotions. I think what they're doing is they are going to be winning over non-comic book fans with, with Ryan Reynolds' sense of humor and just the different spin that this entire movie's going to have on the superhero genre and the franchises itself. So I think it's great that they can poke fun at the, at the, at the children X-Men and keep doing more of like a Ferris Bueller's Day Off kind of breaking the fourth mm -hmm. wall thing with Deadpool. I, I don't see any harm in it, and it's not going to burn people out or freak people out. So. And you made a good point, Christian, about it being rated R. Yeah. So if you're 18 and under and you know who Deadpool is, they don't need a, you can't see the movie. I mean, unless you get an adult, 
they need to get the older audience and how many like i don't know if you asked your parents who deadpool is they'd be no like, who clue. the hell no, is no, that no no actually i probably asked some of my my friends from from college and they probably don't know who the hell deadpool yeah, is what is a deadpool yeah. right. what is a deadpool exactly all right uh what what's next Emilio Sanchez Leon writes, Hey Collider Crew, I have a question about Curtis Hansen. Coming out of the 90s and the early 2000s, he was one of the strongest directors we had around. LA Confidential and Wonder Boys are both excellent movies, and 8 Mile was very good too. Yet he disappeared for a while and resurfaced a year ago in an HBO movie. I was surprised to see his name in Too Big to Fail. What happened to him? Can some CMU rescue him? Schnepp, uh, what do you think about Curtis Hansen? And- uh, he did the payback movie with Mel Gibson, isn't that right? I don't remember. Oh. I don't think so. Maybe. I mean, or I know that like Brian Helgland. I'm, am I confusing the two? Would well, you, Brian so? Helgland uh, wrote L.A. Confidential, right. and then he directed a, a Knight's Tale, and then most recently that Legend movie with Tom Hardy. Mm. Okay. I'm not. Curtis Hansen. I looked at his uh, IMDb. He also did The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Wow. Yeah. Cur- wow. Um, yeah. I like Curtis Hansen. I, I mean, I wasn't a huge fan. I mean, Eight Mile. There were parts that were really good, and then some of it I thought was a little. Just, just okay. I, but um, I love L.A. Confidential. I, it's one of my favorites. Um, so I'd like to see him do some more stuff. I mean, maybe he's got a. a I didn't. What's the movie that he did for HBO? Uh, Too big to fail. It was, it was about the banking crisis and that. Did you see it? Yeah, I liked oh, it. Okay. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I haven't seen it. So I'm. Um, I'd like to see him come back and do some more movies. I'm always rooting for him. Yeah, I, I L.A. Confidential is also one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. I thought Wonder Boys was good. I thought Eight Mile was good. But I guess he had done like uh, he did that movie Lucky You with um, Eric Bana and oh, uh, who's who's the girl? I remember. And I forgot. But it was like some sort of romantic drama that was said about some gambling and it didn't do well critically or financially. And then he also I think he directed that chasing mavericks movie oh, the with one the with the dr- yeah the curtis surfing hansen, one curtis hansen did that yeah yeah really i think he did it he might have co-directed it with uh michael i didn't Apted. like that movie at all yeah chasing so I, I don't think he's been on a very good run no, lately. did you no. were you able yeah. to find out no he did not do that he did do chasing mavericks though but yeah for some reason i got him confused with someone else but i don't know what happened to him some sometimes people do like have a, a great run and then they just take a break and then when they took that break was right when a new regime came in. Mm-hmm. So it takes a lot longer for them to get projects off the ground. So you could be seeing someone doing like one, two, three, four movies in a row every four, you know, for four years. And then all of a sudden nothing for eight years because mm-hmm. they hit a development snag. They might have been working on something for for two years as a writer. And then that thing fell apart. So then they jumped over to something else and that fell apart. That's all of a sudden four years and you get on something else and it takes four years to get it out there you get your eight years and you're like what happened to that guy <laughs> i've been working the whole time yeah, you know yeah, people just, don't see all the behind the it scenes it always stuff. happens you see people drop off the map it doesn't necessarily mean that they're just like on a private island somewhere smoking weed right. they're probably <laughs> busting their ass trying to do something trying to get back in it yeah, yeah it's that's how it is and then he said cmu which i think we all thought maybe he said meant mcu because i looked up cmu and the only thing i could find was carnegie mellon university no. <laughs> so oh, yeah. i don't think he means that probably I think, mcu but i don't think curtis hansen fits the mcu yeah, I, I mean, I it, maybe if something fits with him, I, because the way Marvel is kind of branching out and doing these different types of movies, talking about like Doctor Strange being a different type of movie, Ant Man being, maybe maybe he could find something that fits with him. Right. But I don't know if that's the answer. Maybe he probably needs to do something beforehand. Yeah. All right, what's next? Brandon Fuller writes, Hi Collider peeps, love you all. So I often hear you guys talk about actors going into directing, which is great, but do you know of any cases where a director has successfully gone into acting? Thanks and stay beautiful. Uh, two examples of good ones are Woody Allen and uh, Orson Welles. Those mm-hmm. were two directors that, that actually were pretty good actors as well. Two examples of not so good uh, Acting from directors are one of my favorite directors, Quentin Tarantino, um, and uh, M. Night Shyamalan. He mm. pops himself in his own movie as well. Uh, wh- wh- what do you think? I'd say uh, Steven Soderbergh. Mm-hmm. Like uh, he he cast himself as the lead actor in his own independent film called Schizopolis, oh, I and I thought he did a pretty good job. I mean, you know, it's like he definitely had some comedic timing. And he was a pretty good actor. And, I, you know, I was like, why doesn't Steven Soderbergh ever pop himself back into some films? Because if you never saw Schizopolis, you could check it out. It's on like Hulu and it's in a bunch of different uh, ways to see it. So uh, I would say that guy for sure. Question. Was Peter, Peter Berg was actor first, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Um, I don't know, director first? I don't know. I have to think well, about it, it doesn't go that way right. very doesn't normally well. normally happen, uh, yeah. Mo- most actors, not most, but 
a good percentage more than other fields when an actor goes to directing. Yeah. Actually, not it's usually mediocre. Or it's, it turns out pretty well. Directing to acting doesn't is happen a often. Whole different. You said, because you look at it too, and nothing. Walls, right? Yeah, well, nothing against acting, um, but you know the the directing is the more for is more power position, the more creative position, the more and like a lot of actors strive to get to that director position as well too. Some might not want to do yeah. it as well too, and some could hit on a status. An actor could hit on a status to where they can get a lot of power but it's the director going to be an actor unless he's in his own movie i don't know i can't i can't really yeah I, yeah i can't it's, i gotta think about it's it it's tough and i'm speaking personally for myself like you know i want to direct i've directed these little sketch videos uh but personally i i'm only in them because of convenience factor i mean the one that i did with the star wars fanboy reaction That's good. actually it was supposed to be you yeah that was supposed to be in yeah. it and then after you said you couldn't do it i asked you and then you couldn't do it and then i i stepped in it for so i i just don't think directors to actors is just a very good transition the other way around yeah all right, guys, now on to our live Twitter section. Ashley, what do you've got picked out? Jeremy L. writes, buy or sell a married with children type film using topics the show did. Is the world too liberal today for it? Uh, I don't know. A movie, movie version? Stuff. See, for me, like the movie version doesn't work unless you have all the original actors like Ed O'Neill, uh, Katie Seagal, Christina Applegate. Like, right. yeah. so I just don't know. Like, and you bring them into that situation, they're all older now. Yeah. And so I just, I don't see it happening. I'd, I'd say do a really creepy all CG one with them as zombies and call it married with dead children. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, I do, I do think that there's a, there, you could do it. I mean, the, the, as far as the question goes, would, is it too politically correct? Maybe on certain television stations, it could be on network maybe, but not certainly not on cable. You can get away with, uh, for what, for the way it, you would catch flack for some of the stuff they talk about, but that was one of the, it, the show caught flack back then. Um, as far as a movie, they could do it if it was like a, you know, an hour and a half kind of funny comedy on the, like, but you, they'd all have to come back. Mm -hmm. It'd be, I would be very skeptical right away. Uh, if they're like, they're doing a married with children movie, but it's all new actors. I'd be like, no, yeah. no, thank you. you have to be called, that. Still married with children. Yeah. Or, yeah, or, or, the, or the kids cast. or Bud and, and, you know, Kelly get married and then it's like, okay, it's their kids. And that's kind of what happens, you know, like it's vacation again. Yeah. But uh, to me, if they did a movie years later, would I be interested in it? Yeah, I would be. It's, I, I, it's the first time ever even someone even talked about it. It would be interesting. Rated I, R. It has yeah. to be rated R. Yeah, it has to be rated R. I'd be interested if it's all the same cast and both uh, Christina Applegate, uh, Kelly and Bud, yeah. they have to still live. I want them not, not <laughs> to be married. The house. I want them to still, still live at house. home. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Mm -hmm, him. <laughs> it's one of my yeah, favorite that's shows. One of, the, one of the shows that like I liked it when I was a kid and I watched it just because it was like one of those things like I wasn't supposed to be watching. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've seen it lately and it still holds it's up. Holds it holds up, up, man. I saw it recently, too, and it's still funny. It's yeah. a funny because Ed O'Neill was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hey, get my shoe. Uh, <laughs> he was so brilliant in that show. Yeah, it, 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 oh, it, yeah underrated. Everyone, because they just thought of it as this really kind of dirty, yeah, kind of like scummy show. show. But yeah, it, yeah, it was hilarious. Fantastic. So good. All right, what's next? Daryl Kingsley writes, what movies made you cry? Recently, Fruitvale Station. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah that's a tough one. Um, I usually get misty eyed. I usually I don't cry during movies, uh, but I get like the, he's the, the, the too little. Manly. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you what though, man. <laughs> since you, like since having a kid, like there, th I get a more more emotional with certain scenes, um, especially with like uh, you know father daughter mm -hmm. type stuff. But uh, it's like the overall that one. There was a movie. It was a documentary called Young at Heart that got me mm -hmm. when Ellis and I first started reviewing movies. And it's if you haven't oh, seen Young at Heart, I just remember bring one. a box uh, up that like yeah, got the beginning. beginning the, yeah, I was yeah. like. And I hate Pixar. You made me tear up. Like <laughs> yeah. in the first like two minutes, it was like so crushing. Uh, no spoilers, but if you haven't seen Up, you'll cry in the first five oh, minutes. So a, a random one for me because it's not my typical genre. Flash Gordon. No. <laughs> <laughs> is is Cold Mount Mountain uh, oh, yeah. with Nicole Kidman and uh, Jude Law? There's something about it. I mean, it's it's kind of like a drama with some romance in it. But for some reason, when notes there's spoilers if you haven't seen it. When they, they kind of reconnect at the end, for some reason, I just get, I get a little teary-eyed. 12 Years a Slave 
Yeah. Uh, oh, I got yeah. teary eyed uh, because of the pure horror of living in yeah. that kind of a situation. I remember it was like, I, it was, as a human being, I was like, how could we have done this to each other? It just it drove me nuts watching that movie. So, oh. Ashley, uh, what are some movies that you get? Um, Charlie Brown. Yeah. Charlie Brown. Just gem, just gem and the Holograms. me the wrong way. Um, every Pixar movie, probably, Schnepp, when you said that, completely reminded me of it. Um, especially like Monsters Inc when they had to leave Boo back in the room like I just uh, <laughs> it really gets me every time and weirdly enough I remember the first movie that made me cry was The Notebook because mm. of the ending and I won't mm. give it away but yeah those those get me every single time all right what's next next question comes from Nazari Maldonado and they write what's the latest news of Halloween 3 I personally have not heard anything. No How idea. about you guys? You guys can check it out. It's called Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. It was made in 1983. Yeah, or you're talking about a new Halloween. New oh, okay. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, what's next? Matthew Nagra writes, Are you guys excited with Jim Carrey stepping into a dramatic role again with True Crimes, which begins production soon? Yes, I am, because I, I'm one of those people who I thought his performance in, in Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind was overlooked. Yeah. I, I thought he was great. He was great in Truman Show as well. Right. That was a little more half comedic, half dramatic. But in Eternal Sunshine, I thought he I think he deserved an Oscar nomination mm. in Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. He was the most real in any movie he's ever been in to this day it was like that's who i feel like if you watch like the behind the scenes of how he was with kate winslet wow. just acting in, in like, like he blew her away like from the how real it was how honest it was i feel like that's how jim carrey is in general so yes i'm very excited to see him in a dramatic role again i hope it's more like we're talking about here with eternal so he tried it again with the majestic and it didn't it didn't work and he's done uh, done other things there's a heart that horror movie that he did that yeah. 27 or 20 yeah whatever that was so i'd like to see i i really am a big fan of his dramatic acting um the same way i'm a big fan of adam sandler's dramatic acting mm -hmm. gets overlooked as well too and, and he's at a place where he needs to go down that route <laughs> jim carrey should do it again because he's he's really really good at it and his last couple comedies that he's done uh, the the Burt Wonderstone and what mm -hmm. else been okay yep. yeah you know speaking of crying Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind really knocked me you know in the the cry yeah. cry tear area because I had just gotten out of a long term relationship and then I saw that mm. movie and it was like uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, getting beat same, up same thing Man. happened to me so, I, I don't think I cried but I just so devastated right. yeah. well you're tearing up because yeah. it's like make, making you go through all of these memories yeah. that movie's an incredible film and speaking just tangenting for a second Charlie Kaufman's Animalisa or Animalosa however you say it it's an all animated feature film oh, yeah, he's coming yeah. back so there's a trailer out I don't know if Jim Carrey's going to be in it but I had to say give it a little pop yeah. off there I think Jim Carrey is an incredibly talented actor. Even mm -hmm. Kick-Ass 2, he was a highlight yeah. in Kick-Ass 2. I think anything that he does, he puts his all into, whether it's, you know, I think he was the standout of a pretty mediocre film, the Burt Wonderson yeah. thing. He was the best part of it. So seeing him try something new in, this, in, a, in a serious role, I'm all for it. All right. What's next? Mark Rudy writes, if Deadpool doesn't do big numbers, will it spell the end for Ryan Reynolds as a superhero at least? I don't think so. I think this is a, a risk. And also remember, this movie is not, they're not spending a lot of money on the production. Actually, they're probably going to spend more money on the marketing of this yeah. movie than the actual production of it. So I, I, I don't think so. Well, you know, I was going to say the marketing of it, they're being really smart about it. YouTube's free. They just <laughs> yeah. did this trick or treat thing. It's got like 3 million views already. Free. Um, I do think it'll be the end of him as a, as a superhero, but I think it'll be his choice. I think that he he's playing the character that he really wants to play. He played Green Lantern, didn't go so well. Um, if it bombs, and I don't think it will, I think it's going to be really, I think you're going to see Deadpool 2, two 3. I think this movie's going to do really well. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't do well, I think that at least for a while, he's going to step away. And I also think that, you know, whether it be the MCU or other, or DC, well, they're not really accept him as a, as a superhero. That's how, the, that's how they look at these things. If it doesn't work, they're probably going, we don't really, there's so many other actors right now that want to step in. But I think it's nothing to even worry about because I really do think this is the perfect role. He was the only guy when they were talking about right. ever doing a Deadpool movie. It's got to be Ryan Reynolds. Then they did it, did a stupid thing. I love that crack on the that they did in that Halloween video, by the way, about should have kept his mouth shown. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was really great. Yeah, that was good. But yeah, I think we're in good shape. 
Yeah, I don't think he can ever go back to the DC universe, even though that Green Lantern he did wasn't part of this new universe. I think he's just too associated yeah. with that. He can't play another character. He could hop into the Marvel universe, I hey, think. It's not that he couldn't. I just think that if it, it – let's say, again, if it bombs, I just think that he's going to want to stay away. I, I would assume he'd want to stay away from, from doing superhero movies again, and I also think that – the studios would probably want to keep him away from it, but I, just, I just think it's a. It really is a moot point because I think that we're not going to have to worry about it. There's at all. so many. I mean, he's already played three superhero characters. He's also Hannibal King and Blade. Mm. So that was right. a, that was right. a Marvel character. Now he's a, now he's another Marvel character. Look at Chris Evans. He was the Human Torch. He was also in another superhero type film called Push, where he had these like superpowers. I actually like that movie. Yeah, I thought I thought it was great. I really it's an underrated film too. And now he's Captain America. So you know, a lot a lot of these actors get multiple chances. If you know, but yeah, if Deadpool doesn't work out, I would say he's probably going to take a break too. So. Okay. All right. I know John doesn't like prequels, so I thought I'd ask, what is your favorite prequel of all time? Oh, that's tough. I'm trying to think. I'll say it. Temple of Doom. Bam. I keep forgetting that's a prequel. Yeah. Yep. Um, can you think of any? Hmm. Phantom Menace? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, boy, prequels. Hmm. There's not really that many prequels, are there? You have to, yeah. I mean, timeline wise, to look uh, it up. the flashback scenes for Godfather Two <laughs> and Godfather Two for Godfather <laughs> One of counts. Um, yeah, it's tough because uh, even like the Hobbit, I like the Hobbit, but it wasn't. Is it, it pales in comparison to right. to the to Lord of the Rings? So, uh, here's some if you guys. Uh, so this is a list off of uh, Wikipedia as far as films that are prequels. Oz. The Great and Powerful, uh, I don't know, another part of the forest, Tinkerbell, Davy Crockett, Psycho 4, The Beginning, no thanks, uh, Godfather Part 2, there's a yeah. big, okay. so, uh, there's some, Indiana Jones, The Thing, uh, Dumb and Dumberer, there you go, let's never talk about that one ever right. again, yeah, there's, there are actually quite a few, I mean, look at, um, they, they say X-Men, X-Men Days of Future Past, it's kind of a prequel-ish, Ish. If you look at first it, first class is a prequel. First oh, class yeah. is a so prequel. Bam. Yeah, there you go. I finally go. got one. I figured it. <laughs> All right, what's next? Naughty Nate, right? Whoa! Can, <laughs> look at the way you said that. Naughty Take Nate. It easy. <laughs> um, can cinematography <laughs> change the way you perceive an actor's performance? Uh, cinematography. I mean, it it, it can make a, a an actor look. What kind of performance is Naughty <laughs> Nate talking about, yeah. by the way? Has, what performance is Naughty Nate uh, inferring? Hmm? Oh, are you asking me? No, I'm just well, in uh, general. Well, you, 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 you gave him a nice introduction. Well, yeah. he sent his question like a few times. I've seen his question a few times, ah. so I was excited for him to wow. actually ask the question. Right. I mean, the way you shoot someone definitely affects the way they're viewed. You know, you shoot them at certain angles. They make, make them look more powerful. Uh, you shoot them at maybe a low angle. They look more diminutive. Uh, I actually think editing is actually more important in terms of performance, making an actor look good. Because yeah. you you can take a, a fantastic actor and pick out his worst takes in a movie and put them in a movie, and you'd be like, man, that guy is terrible. Right. Or from the same movie, take his best performance, and you're like, man, that guy's an Oscar winner. So I think editing affects it more than cinematography. I think also when you're shooting an actor, uh, you give them the space to play. And I think that also affects their performance. If you're like, we, we got to hurry up and we got to do this. And you got you got two takes to do it. You're rushing and forcing something. Whereas in, you know, I'm not talking about getting all Kubrick and doing 84 takes or something like that. But, you know, if you could do like eight or nine takes and let them try different ways of performing or doing the, the, the you know, re reading lines and reacting and acting back and forth with each other. I think that's where you get real true good performances. I mean, it all depends on how you, how you, who the director is. Of course, I think the director is absolutely uh, crucial as far as what he's able to get out of the, the actors. But I agree with you as far as the editing goes, how important the editing is. You can get that great performance out of an actor too. And then however that person is cut, you could, if you're, if it cut, if it's cut the wrong way, he could look terrible. Or if it's cut in the right way, he could look brilliant. He or she could look brilliant. Um, but I think it's a mixture of all of it. So I would say a, an actor's director is really important to someone who, uh, who really wants to get the, the, the that knows the character and isn't just using the actors as like a, a set piece mm -hmm. and w knows that he needs the actor or actress to tell the story. Crucial as far as to end the writing, but I would say editing, man, I think you're right. All right, let's take uh, two more. All right, Chris Ordaz writes, I was wondering what is your favorite movie sound effect? Huh? That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite is the... Uh, the uh, the scream, the well oh, the scream. scream. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not even a good one. But <laughs> let me give you another clean one. Got room uh -oh, tone, uh -oh. room tone. Uh -oh. 
It's good. That's cool. good. <laughs> it's good for a comedian. It kind of takes me out of movies sometimes. It's if, so. if it's like in a drama or something like yeah. that or something I'm supposed to be taking seriously. But in a comedy or something that's supposed to be a little funny, I, I like it. Um, Probably the lightsaber sound, maybe. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, you know what? My The one that I hate the most that I hear in every every single movie, every car commercial, it's that car screech that... Yeah. It's a double screech that doesn't even sound real. And somebody filmed it like in 1950 and it went to a sound bank and every single person has that sound effects right. portfolio is like, yo, dude, get the car squeal squeak. It's just so bad sounding. But once you hear a car like stop really quick and you hear this double, I keep doing it. But when you hear it, you'll never be able to unhear it and you'll hear it all the time and everything. I want to see if I can get it. Because we're, ah, it's too late. I was trying to bring up the Wilhelm scream, but um, there, you know, the other thing that I, in surround sound, like anytime there's a fighter, uh, like planes, mm -hmm. like because even say what we were talking about uh, Pearl Harbor before, I remember getting surround sound in my place, and I get, just getting the DVD for Pearl Harbor because the sound was so incredible. The t -t 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 right, like all this, it's it's like a really good plane. Battle, it's it sounds so incredible. It's one of my favorites. Well, Ben Bird is one of the greatest sound designers ever. I mean, he, every sound effect that he designed for Indiana Jones, for all the Star Wars, the laser sound effects, yeah. just everything. You know, the Tie Fighters, all those sounds are so much fun. You I, know, you know what's overdone is in the trailer, the, like yeah. in every oh, yeah. trailer, the District Nine yeah. noise. Yeah. Yeah. You can hear oh, every, you know. <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got it. Yes, <laughs> that's it, that's the Wilhelm. Do it again. All right, give, give me a second. All right, here we go, ready? Yes. <laughs> you guys wanna hear the, the most annoying sound ever? <laughs> How's that? That's that pretty it? good, actually. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> All right, one more. All right, Jacob Barras writes, would you guys have any interest in seeing a That 70s Show movie reboot with a new cast? No. Uh, I never really watched the show, to be honest. Yeah. 80s show didn't go too well. Right. They did yeah. an 80s show, right? It was like, no thanks. Yeah, nope. I just, I don't see it yeah. happening. Could cast Ellis, though, as a Topher Grace role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, guys, that's it for today's episode. I want to thank the people joining us at the table today. Schnepp, where can people find you? You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp and at T-D-O-S-L-W-H. And you could uh, get my film by going to www.tdoslwh.com. You could get the digital download or Blu-ray and support independent films. Film. Christian? Uh, well, make sure you watch Collider Jedi Council today. Myself, Campia, and David Griffin. Uh, we did it. We, we shot it yesterday so we can get, so we made sure John was on it. It'll be on today around four o'clock. Yeah. That will be up. Make sure you do that and hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Make sure that you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Christian Harloff. Happy whatever today is, yeah. guys. You got to prepare it. You got to think of it before it gets yeah. to you. I'm so still you doing have it. the day yeah. ready. And our lovely host, Ashley, where can people find you? On Twitter and on Instagram at Ashley Mova. Happy Thursday, guys. That's how you do it. That's how you do Harloff. it. Harloff. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And if you want to check out some of my my sketch videos that I do, uh, YouTube Think Hero Pro. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash collider videos. And we will see you guys tomorrow. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider. <laughs>